worship here at St. Andrew's United Church. This is a special week as it relates to some celebrations that have been taking place in the life of the church and in our country as well. This past Wednesday, we celebrated the 95th anniversary of the United Church of Canada as we recognized the celebration that took place on the 10th of June, 1925 at the Mutual Street Arena in downtown Toronto with the very first service of this denomination. And then later this week, we'll celebrate as a country, Indigenous Peoples Day, and we give honour and thanks for all the Indigenous peoples of this land and for their care and for their honouring of the Creator that we share. The United Church of Canada and St. Andrew's United Church recognize the Haudenosaunee and the Anishabi people as the traditional peoples of this territory. We acknowledge and give gratitude to the Indigenous peoples for sharing these lands in order for us to continue this ministry of God's calling here today. Let us worship God. to share the Creator's gift of abundant life for all. And we fix ourselves on you, Creator. So come fill our hearts with your endless love and send the wind of your spirit of new hope through our lives. Come light our souls to rise in faith and to reach out to your kingdom. Come pour your spirit upon us as we stand together as brothers and sisters. Lift up our heads Brush away the shadows and shine your grace into our minds. And so, Creator, we rise to worship and shake off the shackles of a fallen world and join our hearts together. With gratitude, we gather as a community in praise. Creator, we offer ourselves and we seek transformation and to celebrate the power of your spirit that is always moving within our midst. Let us pray. for the opportunity to gather in this sacred place. Here we are most aware of the gift of the wind, aware of the gift of the sun, aware of the gift of humanity, and aware of the gift of creation, and the four directions which support our living, our breathing, and our very being. This day we pray with thanksgiving for the First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples of Canada, and we commit ourselves to be people of reconciliation in the tradition of our beloved Jesus. For it is in his name that we pray. Amen. Oh, 
May the peace of Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us share the greeting of peace with our neighbors, our families, our friends, our loved ones, wherever they are this morning. Our reading of scripture this morning comes from the very first book of the Old Testament, Genesis. A familiar story to us all, a shocking story in many ways, as Abraham and Sarah discover that they're actually going to be parents. So we're reading today from chapter 18, verses 1 through 15. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of the Mamre, as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him, and when he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them, and he bowed down low to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves and that you may pass on since you have come to your servant. And so they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant, who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds of milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Abraham, where's your wife Sarah? And he said, oh, she's over there in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife, Sarah, shall have a son. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age, and it had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. And so Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I've grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the time set, I will return to you in due season, and Sarah will have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I didn't laugh, for she was afraid. And he said, Oh yes, Sarah. You did laugh. Here in his wisdom, thanks be to God.
It's one of the first games that we play with, with babies and infants. As soon as a young one's eyes are able to focus, it's a sure thing that, that some adult is going to sit with their knees together and that infant or baby upon their lap facing them. Maybe they're supporting the child's head and shoulders if they haven't gained yet the strength to sit up on their own. And then the adult will either place a hand over the child's eyes or, or maybe even a hand over their own eyes. And then pull the hand off and apart and say something absolutely nonsensical. They'll say, pick a boo Well, there's either going to be one of two reactions when an adult does that to an infant. The first reaction might be an absolutely looked, a look of stun on the baby's face before you can see the face tighten up and begin to well with tears of fear before the crying begins. Or we have the other reaction, which we absolutely love and adore. The baby giggles, and their face and their light eyes light up in a magical and an infectious manner. Perhaps this age-old simple game has been developed over eons of time as a way of teaching us serious, mature grown-ups to let go of all that weighs upon us in our lives and simply be silly and childish and in that very moment childlike again. Well, just as a small child loves to laugh unexpectedly, it is often also the unexpected that makes us laugh. The pair of hands open up and a big smile and laughter comes out. Maybe you're sitting and uh, enjoying some time with friends on a, on a Zoom social, uh, a social gathering. And at some point, you utter words unexpectedly that just come out of your mouth and all of a sudden everyone breaks into laughter because it's so absolutely absurd what you just said. Or maybe the words you said have a double entendre. And people are barreled over in laughter and giggling that lasts and lasts and lasts. You see, in these ways and in many others, laughter can be the note that signals rec recognition that the world is sometimes not what we suppose it's going to be. We've been given new information or a new awareness that moves us. At other times, it might disturb us, but finally and ultimately, it offers us pure joy and delight. And there's no other time than the time that we are experiencing right now, and that we have experienced over the last number of months, and that we look forward to over the next couple of months, where we long to experience joy and delight, and the freedom just to be ourselves. Well, it's been a long journey for Abraham and Sarah. First, they had to leave their comfortable home in the fertile crescent of northern-day Iraq, settling for a time in Haran. And along the way, they were in a place called Tara. Not a place called Tara, forgive me. Tara was Abraham's father. With them, was also his nephew Lot. And while in Haran, Terah died, and so the three, Abraham, Sarah, and Lot, journeyed on making an eventual detour through Egypt, where Abraham, well, to save his own skin, offered Sarah to Pharaoh to save Abraham's own neck. Well, it made Abraham incredibly wealthy. 
And then he grabbed Sarah and Lot, and they took off again back to Canaan, where Abraham was willing to name his slave Eliezer as heir, because Sarah was barren, unable to have children and produce a rightful heir for Father Abraham. But Sarah, you see, Sarah had a plan. It was a plan as diabolical as the Grinches. It was as out there as a plan hatched by the real housewives of Beverly Hills. It made soap operas look like Disney productions because Sarah enlisted her maid, Hagar, to quietly find her way into Abraham's bed and produce a child preferably a boy, and then place the child, that newborn baby, on Sarah's lap. And then Hagar could just quietly go away off into the sunset. Well, Sarah thought this was a great plan, a great idea. But in the end, it backfired miserably. Duh. Because Hagar made fun of Sarah. She kept the boy Ishmael for herself and became the favorite of Abraham's. But what was it that God had said to Sarah? God said, Sarah, I will bless you, and you shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. Well, when Abraham heard this, he fell down laughing at the feet of God and brushed it off as absurd. And so he picked himself up, and he went and circumcised Ishmael, and decided not to bother his wife with any of this hilarious stuff that God had said. Well, here we are this morning. Abraham is having a little snooze on a wonderful, warm day underneath a tree by his tent. Sarah is busy doing Sarah things inside, like looking after the daily rituals of cooking and cleaning and baking and mending and organizing, you know, tent-like things. Abraham is startled out of his nap by three men approaching from afar, and upon their arrival begins the traditional process of welcoming and showing hospitality by bowing down low and then offering these three strangers food and water. Hey, Sarah! Sarah, honey! How about some food and water for our guests? Abraham yells through the tent opening. And then he runs off to tell one of his slaves to kill a fattened calf so that his guests may feast upon it. Well, stomach's full, thirst quench. The visitors ask, Abraham, where's Sarah? We haven't seen Sarah. Where is she? Well, she's in the tent, Abraham replies. And then one of the three travelers said, You know what, Abraham? About this time next year, I'm going to return. And when I return, your wife Sarah will have borne a son. Well, Sarah, well... You know what kind of plans she has made to somehow create an heir through Hagar for Abraham. Well, she's hiding in the tent and overhearing and listening. And when Sarah overhears what this stranger has said, she starts to laugh. How could this worn-out woman like me have a baby, she thought. And when my master, my, heaven, my husband, is so old as well. But then we're told that the Lord says to Abraham, Abraham, what's so funny? Why did Sarah laugh? Well, why did Sarah laugh? I think maybe you and I may have laughed under the same kind of circumstances if we had been watching this from afar. I can't imagine uh, Jesse and I being 
90 years old, just like Abraham and Sarah. And some stranger shows up at the door and says that within a year, we're going to be having another baby. I think that I would react really astounded and probably laugh hysterically. Because our, our knowledge and our understanding of life and of biology and everything else says that is a far-fetched notion. It's not going to happen. But God asks, why, Sarah, do you laugh? I mean, we laugh for all different reasons and for different circumstances and in different uh, situations. We laugh sometimes out of sheer surprise. We laugh sometimes in fear. And we can also laugh while thumbing our noses at others. Laughing in surprise is pretty obvious to all of us. Something funny happens, something of an unexpected uh, punchline to a joke comes forward. An image startles us like, uh, like running into a fence while we're not looking. It might hurt in the moment, but then you know, those around us might be filled with laughter because of the silliness of what we have done. Or maybe it's laughter around the table as we tell funny stories that surprise us with their authenticity about something. And in that authenticity, there is such humor. This is a great kind of laughter that we experience. It's a healthy laughter. A laughter that makes your cheeks and your belly ache. And it's a type of laughter that we all need and require for our health. But then there's also the laughter that is offered as a reaction to fear. And I know personally a little something about this because quite often I'll begin to laugh when I'm feeling afraid of something. And I've done so ever since I was a young child. As a child, my laughter drove my parents absolutely crazy when I was being scolded or spoken sternly to. I was afraid. But instead of being respectful and a little bit humble, in fear I would begin to laugh. My parents obviously thought that I was mocking their frustration and would tell me to stop. But every time they would tell me to stop, I would become more and more afraid and this Laughter would keep rolling out of me as a response to that fear. I even one time laughed at a, at a grade school principal who was threatening to give me the strap, which of course led him to believe that I wasn't taking him seriously at all. Well, I didn't get the strap. Something else happened instead. But I just laughed. Not to be disrespectful but just simply because I was afraid. And then there's laughing in the faces of others for the purpose of bullying or putting someone down and gaining an advantage or a feeling of self-worth or superiority over another. This type of laughter is a product of arrogance and disregard for our fellow human beings, our brothers and sisters in creation. Laughing in the face of someone else may not necessarily mean that you would not actually laugh in someone's face. But it is a show of disrespect and dishonor to the humanity of another person. Closer to home, we might be laughing in the face of God. Whenever we decide that it is us, we have the power to make the decisions that we have in relationship to the divine. Whenever we honor ourselves first and everyone else, including to God, as a distant second, we are knowingly engaging in a behavior that is contrary to the relationship and the call of Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit to seek justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with our God. So why did Sarah laugh? 
at the strangers, one of whom we are led to believe as being God, God's self. I think it was probably out of sheer surprise, coupled with unimaginable fear. God let her and Abraham laugh. Oh yes, you did laugh, and the child will be called Isaac, God tells Abraham and Sarah. Isaac, which means laughter. Far from judging Sarah, God joins in the laughter, recognizing the, the quirkiness of this equation. Barren womb plus elderly women plus old man equals new parents. Well, we know the story. About a year later, Sarah gives birth to Isaac, a healthy boy born of these aged parents. And it's an odd, knee-slapping, glorious moment when Sarah says, God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears will laugh with me. Laughter of joy and surprise. And those things of joy and surprise can still happen, can't they? Isn't it incredibly wonderful and life-giving when we experience those moments. It's as simple as when we open our hands to a startled baby and the baby laughs, causing us to be filled with joy and laughter ourselves. For in God, there are always new possibilities, even especially unimaginable ones. And they may even come to us in the strangest and most ridiculous of ridiculous of ways. And maybe it's just God sitting there with us upon God's lap, covering our eyes and opening and shouting, Peekaboo, I see you. Thanks be to God for the laughter of our hearts, our souls, and what we share with one another. Amen. Creator God, Great Spirit, whose compassion has been known in our lives more times than we can count, we open our hearts and souls to the needs of this world. And on this Sunday when we celebrate Indigenous Day of Prayer, we acknowledge the great injustices that have been perpetrated against those who have lived on and cared for this land long before our ancestors arrived. We pray that with compassion and determination, we will continue to make ourselves aware of the impact of residential schools, the 60s scoop, and the continued suppression of Indigenous culture and tradition, so that the legacy of colonization is acknowledged by each and every one of us. Creator God, Great Spirit, you call us to relationships rooted in equality and respect. This day we covenant to be more aware of the racism that Indigenous, Métis, and Inuit people of this country experience. And we commit ourselves to raise our voices when we hear prejudiced comments and to guide others in the sacred direction of celebrating diversity that is your gift. To humanity. 
Creator God, Great Spirit, in the quiet of our hearts and through the witness of our being, we pray thanks for your accompaniment on the journey toward individual and communal wisdom and understanding. Let us, who are the Church, stand in solidarity and true to Jesus' call to reconcile with sisters and brothers of your creation. O Creator God, Great Spirit, hear our prayers and guide our words and actions from this moment onward. And we pray using Jesus' words, in the spirit of Mother and Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. in the eternal God, and we sing with our hearts, our minds, our voices, and hopefully with a smile and joy upon our faces. Number 315, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Number 315.
And as we go forth on this beautiful peach of a day, may we bite into the goodness of all that God has for us to share in as God's people in this creation. May we continue to spread the love and peace of Jesus Christ within our midst, and may we feel the presence of the Holy Spirit guiding and encouraging us along the way. So go in love and go in peace this day. Amen. Thank you.